I'm Jason Simon. Uh, we're Dead Meadow. And I am Steve Killey. Uh, well, Steve and I have been playing since day one. Uh, only the drummers have changed. And uh, Juan's been with us now for about three years, I think. And uh, the new record actually has everybody from the from uh, that ever played with us on it. So all three drummers and uh, Corey Shane, who played guitar on one record, is also on it. I think Sean and Lee are just uh, music fans. You know, they like all sorts of things. You know, so uh, I can't remember how we first got in contact with them. We have lots of mutual friends, and uh, I think maybe we talked about doing a tape reissue some of the older Dead Meadow records just because why not yeah and we've, we've put out records uh, with those, with our own label and we've, they would kind of pick them up directly from the store so I'd swing by their store in Fullerton a bit sometimes and they're super super nice guys I love Hickey Fest it's one of my favorite festivals I've actually played it three times now once with Old Testament a side project band and twice with Dead Meadow I think or yeah, I don't know. It's just a really good vibe. It's in Northern California. It's really good river swimming. Uh, everyone's tripping. It's like really small. It's really small if you've been, you know, but it's just like a few folks from San Francisco, some Northern California weed growing types and camping. I like it. You know, I think we were just waiting for the right, right promoters, the right offers, things that made sense logistically and where everything worked right, you know, and then now, the, now there's... Uh, those things are coming through, so we're happy to go. Yeah, and I think that's for everybody. I don't think there was a lot of uh, um, promoters that were willing to take risk on a lot of bands uh, for a long time, and all of a sudden, just in the last few years, a lot of people have sprung up um, that are kind of making a lot of stuff happen in South America for the first time. So. In Mexico City? Yeah, yeah, we stayed a few extra days, went to the pyramids, uh, then uh, yeah, explored the city. And then uh, when we went down to Chile, we had a few extra days. We went to Argentina and Chile, so we had some time to explore. Um, it's been great so far. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, all the shows have been really good, and people, you know, uh, you know, it's a lot of the people that are coming out have been people that have been coming to our shows for a long time. So uh, we definitely have a really good like grassroots following and fan base, and yeah, yeah, I think it's been good everywhere. You know, di uh, different vibes. You know, different places, but. Uh, We've toured for so long, it's kind of like uh, mm -hmm. do the rounds and see all your old friends and catch up with lots of people we haven't seen in a few years. And uh, then it's cool because there's also new new people coming out, you know, so I think it's a good balance of still having like people that are just seeing us for the first time or people that are, haven't seen us in years and are coming back. So it's been nice. And uh, I feel like the new record's been getting a good response, so we're pretty happy about that. Steve came up with it, actually. Yeah, it, it came about actually like joking with a friend of mine um, I, I work doing film stuff sometimes like QC movies and work for Disney and there's so many projects that come through and they're just given asset numbers and then after a while you're just like what is all this stuff and it's just like a massive amount of media that's just being you know shot out into the world and you think about all these people that are making this stuff different people that are making records and people that are make that are directors making shows and and eventually no matter what creativity you put into it it just becomes this weird little nothing asset thing and it just like I don't know, and then, then you work and make something and just be, when's the next thing? You know, it's this weirdly, like, uh, bizarre level of, m m I don't know, mass consumption of media, and it's like, and l almost lack of appreciation. It's a weird time we're living in right now, and I think it's only gonna get weirder, and it, yeah. and it came from that originally. Yeah, there's like a new 12-hour series that people want you to watch every week. You're like, it's so much content just coming. Yeah. But uh, I, I also liked it in a, in a different way, too, where I feel like, the flip side of that, where they do have a, there's so much coming out that what maybe what people need or what I know I need is when you can just get away and get away out in the middle of nowhere and just actually have a little piece of still or nothing, you know, just some sort of calm among all this endless stream of distractions that you get nowadays. So I feel like the title kind of worked in both ways and rolls off the tongue nicely. You know, we always try to have growth and, you know, I mean, it's, it's a dead metal record. You know, it's so funny when people put out a record and people are like, oh, you guys really changed it up. And I'm, I'm, we're always like, really? I guess, you know? I mean, we try to grow and see what directions you can push in and do that. I think in this one, we really did want to try to make like, I don't know, it's a balancing out between a classic dead metal record and pushing new areas, you know? So I think this is the first one we did entirely on our own from 
from start to finish in terms of recording, engineering, mixing. You know, I, I feel like with lyrics, it's like they just, you just kind of like open and then certain things like come or pop in or, or you're like, I'll catch certain lines. And I don't really ever like decide to be like, to, to be writing a song and, and, and like about this, you know? It's more like, oh, this certain song just kind of starts to take a course. Then I'm like, oh, it is kind of about that. You know, and I, and I would like things to be somewhat open-ended, but there is the feeling that we're of these days of, I don't know, a certain specter of impending doom that hangs over life these days. You know, and I feel like that creeps in. You know what I mean? Whether it's political with you know what's going on in the U.S. or all over the world, climatic with the climate, you know, or just even economic with how like, this divide between rich and poor. It's just like a lot of things are kind of coming to a head, and I feel like that kind of creeps in. It can get a little dark, or more about sometimes it's like, it's like how do you live and continue to be creative under or in these times, I guess, I feel like as the pops up here and there in the lyrics. Yeah, they, they don't make it easy for you. Huh? Yeah, how can I be positive and still <laughs> still carry on when things are, are looking grim, you know? Um, it was uh, because it was the 20, 20th anniversary, um, and we had kind of, Mark, who had been playing with, his, was our original drummer, stopped playing. We started playing with Juan, but we still had some songs we had written with Mark, and we're like, well, how do we piece it all together between a new drummer and the previous drummer? And then just reconnecting with everybody, all of a sudden, like, oh, you know, it would make sense to kind of have everyone involved. Yeah, once we were getting into it, we had Mark and Juan. The, the idea kind of started to be like, oh man, you know, Steve McCarty, who was drummer for all the Matter Records, he lives in LA too. We're like, maybe we should hit him up. That'd be pretty cool. We haven't played with him in like eight or nine years, but uh, it was funny. Instantly, you're just like, oh yeah, it works. It's fine. It sounded, you know, slipped right back into it. Yeah. And Corey was in D Washington, D.C., so actually when I was out there visiting family, I like, brought some stuff to record him and recorded his guitar part. You know, it, it was more than, than experimenting with stuff, was was really uh, trying to get everybody involved in the creative process, you know. So as Jason said, it's like, you know, everybody who's been in the band was kind of involved with it, so it was sort of a different approach, and, that, and I thought that was kind of actually kind of fun and interesting, bringing people in for different moments and sessions, and then trying to make it feel like it was just consistent, you know, and, and together. Um, more than like pushing some world of keyboards and over-experimentation or whatever, it was just like, how do, how do all these different people and different ideas come together to make this like cohesive piece of art? Yeah, because it's been 20 years now, somehow, insanely, that we've been a band. That, But uh, it was there was an idea of like, oh man, let's get everybody and kind of like do this, like, make it a classic that men don't have everyone involved and trying to get all these different vibes that, that you know, that we've kind of worked and created over the years. His first dead metal record with some saxophone on it, actually, though. Does it still exist? <laughs> yeah, we, we, yeah, we caught the tail end of there kind of still being this uh, music uh, industry, you know, like when we still, when people still got recording budgets, I feel like, I mean, I guess some bands must, but, you know, like, we just thought it was, it was kind of pre- uh, everything being available online, you know, so there was, still was like people still sold records That was still something that made money, you know, so there was a whole thing of like, oh, no Why would you have your song on a commercial? That's like selling out. You just have it in a record, but now it's like Anyone creative musicians more than anyone you have to like, just try to grab any amount of money You can from anywhere in order just to continue to make music, you know, or it's more like you have to play shows just to try to sell I don't, I don't know it's a lot harder these days for yeah. sure it's, it's more of like a traveling craft show <laughs> being in a band you it's know like, it's like you know you're spreading your ideas and you know I almost feel like people come to shows now especially in the scene in which we play in to like check out everyone's merch and items and stuff I don't think it used to really be like that when it was more like you could actually go to record stores but the more record stores close and, and things change in that world it's it really becomes a live show it's just like the a roving marketplace and, and we're really the, the, the heart and soul of the music industry yeah it's like you know I read all these books about old blues musicians you know and they're like oh cool I have my record I would just I just cut 30 songs you know you know and they put out your record and it was like oh they got paid like 300 bucks for the record it was more like okay cool that's good promotion now I'm gonna make more when I go on the road you know and you almost have to view a record like that I feel like because you know you don't make anything from streaming or anything you know what I mean it's so little so yeah, but, yeah, R records are really, yeah, it's like your business card. <laughs> it kind of helps promote your band. Yeah. But, you know, there's the, that, that's one side. There is the side of it that now, you know, Dead Meadows, people are listening to Dead Meadow in Indonesia, you know, because it's on the internet. So, you know, there's there's good, there's so so much good as well. It's like all things, good good and bad, you know. Um, No, not right now. We're, they're looking at some stuff in the fall. We've been to Europe so much that we're kind of a, I don't know, just waiting to when, when it feels right. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, literally before we started recording this record, I think we did like three European tours pretty much almost in the space of like a year and a half or something, so. Um, yeah. Plans, yeah, but sure. Something we, like we will be back over there for sure. I just, I just know, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I, we're talking to our booking agent. I'm like, you know, don't push it. Wait till everything lines up and, we'll, you know, when it's good, we'll, we'll, we'll do it. It comes with crazy amount of stresses, but it's also, there is a certain simplicity to it where it's like, if I don't do it for a long time, I'll, I do start to miss it, you know, because at home there's a million things to take care of every day and you're running a tour, it's just kind of like, there's still a million things, but it's really m mostly just like, okay, cool, I'm just gonna get to the show and play it and go to the next. Yeah. But uh, it's been a month, so I feel like, I feel like in the future I might have to cut tours at a month, not five <laughs> weeks. This, this is all these good shows in this week that I'm really excited, good cities, but, it's it's a bit long right now. Yeah. It's weighing on us a bit. Yeah, a sometimes bit. I, sometimes it blows my mind bands that do like whole years and things like that. And we have more really days tough. off than us, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you guys. Yeah, thank yeah, you so yeah, much. Yeah, appreciate it.